We film beautifully. I think my city looks absolutely fantastic on film. It doesn't gain weight. It looks wonderful. Our city and our staff here and the city government are amazing with filming. A lot of the time, Philadelphia will become a character in the film that's written for it, sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally. It's a great city to film in. It'll often stand out and become its own character. When I first started here in 1992, nobody thought of Philadelphia as a movie town. Now everybody does. Everybody who lives here, everybody who goes to school here, um, realizes that this is a movie town and is one of the favorite locations of filmmakers. Everybody wants to shoot here. That's why we double, for example, for New York and Washington, D.C. all the time, because we're less expensive than New York and we're a whole lot easier to work in. I think a lot of productions these days are choosing specific cities based on the tax incentive that's provided. Um, however, in the past, and certainly as a bonus, we have uh, tremendous diverse areas here that you can film in. You can have everything just within a, a few mile radius of the inner cities, country, you, know, you have a little bit of everything here. That since we are the birthplace of America, our history here takes precedent. That is the first reason most people do come here. There's lots of other reasons. Number one, the grid pattern of our city streets makes it very logical to be able to park the six to eight different vehicles that we might have uh, for making a film. It also, willingness of the people to give permission for the use of stores, streets, homes, and other sites. We have buildings here from the 1700s all the way up to the present time. So this gives us lots of options. Many cinematographers, such as Take Fujimoto, he loves filming here because he loves how the light plays against our buildings. He filmed many of M. Night Shyamalan's movies here, and he filmed Oprah's Beloved here with Jonathan Demme. Martin Scorsese actually came here for one weekend. He needed our Academy of Music for the Age of Innocence because New York City did not have its old opera house anymore. We did. So he chose to come here for a weekend with his whole crew and he filmed inside our Academy of Music as if it was the New York Academy of Music. We have a tremendous crew base that is local. We have cameramen, we have grips, we have electrics, accountants. We have just a tremendous, uh, reputable crew base here in Philadelphia, and in Pennsylvania, really. As a production coordinator, I am the first point of contact when filming is interested in coming into Philadelphia. So if a location manager, producer, uh, a production manager calls the office and they have an interest in filming in Philadelphia, um, they call me and what happens is I go over what needs to be permitted, what does not, where you need insurance, logistics such as street closures, police, if you need an area towed for a picture. I'm the middle person between city agencies and uh, filming. So I mean that means feature films, that means student films, commercials, PSAs, documentaries, we handle it all here. Typical day on a production, whether you're you know, a production coordinator and you do what I do, or whether you're on the set or a combination of the two, um, they're traditionally very long hours. They're not your typical nine to five hours. We usually do about a 12 to 15 hour day, and that could be, you know, based on the schedule of what we're filming, that could be anywhere from a 6 a.m. call till a you know, wrap up about somewhere between six and eight in the evening. If you're shooting uh, exteriors and it's a nighttime shot, you're out there all night, you know, from when the sun goes down and you've prepped and you're ready to start filming until the sun comes up. But it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Philadelphians in general are getting used to uh, seeing filming and being around these productions and knowing that all of these movie posters that are in our office 
uh, were all made here, either partially or wholly made here. As much production as we've had, there are times when you know, a director doesn't like the last scene that happened or the car scene looks terrible and they, re they have to redo the whole thing. So there are some last minute changes that happen in production. What we usually ask is that the production gives enough notification to these neighborhoods that um, they're able to move their cars, um, they know not to walk on a certain street, you know, between these times. And of course we can't keep people who live on say Spruce Street off of Spruce Street, that's where they live, that's where they raise their families. But we ask, um, you know, they're bringing a lot of money to the city, they're bringing a lot of money to local businesses. Um, but neighbors do get upset and I don't blame them. Um, I would be upset too if these major movie trucks were in my neighborhood and um, knocking over tree branches. But this is sometimes to get upset if people aren't allowed to walk down a certain street, they're not making the uh, money that they, they have before. Um, so we sort of work with them as well. We want the production company to be able to compensate everyone for everyone, but the movies aren't as big budgeted as sometimes things are in California or New York. Um, so their location budgets seem to be a little lower yeah, than some most. There have been a lot of uh, older movies, and the most recent would be Silver Lining Playbook with, of course, Bradley Cooper. Got eight Oscar nominations, won lots of awards at one. Jennifer Lawrence won Best for Best Actress, of course, so that was a, a really great one. Transformers, the second one. National Treasure One, Rocky, Law Abiding Citizen, Trading Places. Fallen with Denzel Washington is a movie not that many people saw, but I highly recommend it. It's a psychological thriller that never gets old. Shooter, with Mark Wahlberg, of course. In Her Shoes, Marley and Me, and Invincible, about Vince Papali, who played for our Eagles. During uh, the movie, Witness, the manager of the station at the time was asked if they could do a murder in the bathroom. And he said yes, so that he could be in the movie as an extra. Amtrak wasn't too pleased that the murder happened inside <laughs> Amtrak. And so when it came time to do M. Night Shyamalan's Unbreakable and they wanted to do an Amtrak train crash, the answer was a resounding N. Oh, so they created it out of a hotel here. They actually created the train station from there. It was time to film Invincible about our Philadelphia Eagles and Vince Papali. Just when they're getting ready to film, they imploded Veterans Stadium. And so they had to use Franklin Field, which is only two layers instead of three. They CGI'd the third one. Very difficult to fill up an entire stadium with extras, lots of people. So there were extras, except then there were other extras. They were the balloon people. They were balloon mannequins that move around, all dressed as people, in between the real people. So when the wind would blow and people would be clapping for a touchdown, the balloons would kind of move around too, and you didn't really notice that. The same with Age of Innocence. Filling up our Academy of Music is quite a task, thousands. Over 2,000 people were needed, so they had some extras, and dispersed amongst them were people made out of cardboard, dressed in Victorian wigs and beautiful gowns, and they were dispersed amongst the rest of the crowd. I've watched the movie in slow motion. You still can't tell at all because the way it's fussed out and the way the real people are interspersed between both of those films. Know that the film industry has done a tremendous job to help boost tourism and, and that's obvious because if you go on the websites of the, um, the tourism and convention um, um, organizations, the Convention and Visitors Bureaus and the Greater Philadelphia Tourism Marketing Corporation, you will see that they will, for example, have a Silver Linings Playbook Tour on their website so that they're, um, you know, it, it's really a great boost to them. People always want to come and visit some of the locations where movies were made and 
um, and I'm sure you all know that the Rocky statue that's by on the on the art museum um, people don't even call those steps the art museum steps they're called the Rocky steps so clearly um, we've had a tremendous impact on, on tourism and I, I think Silver Linings Playbook is further boosting that the Lanark Diner who would have thought the Lanark Diner was going to be famous as a tour guide, we have to be very knowledgeable and we have to know our subject at hand. We also have to be entertaining. People are here to have a good time, but also to get educated in whatever tours that a person is giving. And you do have to be able to read your audience. Last year was one of the biggest years we ever had. I think there were probably a dozen um, movies and major television series. In the past six years, the name of the game in Hollywood is Tax credits. The biggest effect on, with the with the downturn in the economy um, affected us really on the state level because we we get a, a funding from the city of Philadelphia and from foundations and we were getting a tremendous amount. Forty percent of our funding was coming from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, from the government itself, and they um, we now get nothing from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So it's incredibly challenging and uh, I've been spending a lot of time in Harrisburg to try to get that funding back. We have to reteach the government what this tax credit's all about and, and how vital it is to our infrastructure as a whole in the state. I think people think of movies and they think of television, they're like, they're throwing money left and right and that's not the case anymore. You know, it's all about what you're getting back sort of at the end. Part of the fight is keeping and making sure the tax incentive stays in place so more and more productions come here. The visiting crew and actors get per diems. They spend that money when they're here. They buy clothes and they buy jewelry and they buy food. It is a $3.5 billion industry here that trickles down to everyone that lives here. It trickles down from everyone who cleans the street after a horse and carriage scene or just after certain filming to our hotels, our restaurants. Everyone benefits when movies happen here. There are grips, there are electric, there are hair and makeup wardrobe people that live and want to raise their families here in Philadelphia because they like um, making movies, documentaries, television, commercials, you name it, here and want to stay here. It's just we need to be able to tell the government that it's really important that it does stay here. I've been very lucky. I've been um, working in Philadelphia my entire career. Um, I am married, you know, I have a son, so yes, it can be done. There is enough work to sustain and keep working here. I know plenty of people that have done it and continue to do it. Sharon Pinkinson's you know, great efforts to work with the folks in Harrisburg will hopefully you know, lead to a larger incentive. Uh, we like working here. It's a great city to make movies in. It's a really wonderful place to do it. We flourish on this kind of economy. We are living in between Washington and New York. Our competition is heavy. For tourism, even though we're the seat of history, people are usually on their way somewhere up to New York, down to Washington, they'll stop in Philadelphia. This way, it helps to fill our hotels and it helps make Philadelphia a success and it just helps our overall economy and it makes us feel good. My goal is that we will be the third busiest state in the nation. So there'll be California, New York, and, um, and Pennsylvania. So if you look at it statewide, but basically LA, New York, and Philadelphia. And I think that, um, that you will see that happen um, very quickly if the, um, if the Commonwealth will lift the cap on the tax credit program. There's no reason for it to be capped and all of the states that we are competing with have uncapped tax credit programs. So that's why I'm in Harrisburg all the time. One time people in government were like, Philly movies, like what? And we're doing it. And that uh, injects a tremendous amount of civil, civic pride into the community and that's something that money can't buy.